your season obviously wrapped up in the late fall and the winter. You had another great year with the Gopher volleyball team. Do you get an off season, or is this kind of the beginning of getting it moving again? Yeah, you know, as soon as it's done, uh, thoughts and and actions are already gearing up for the next the next campaign. So, uh, you know, we, we get a little break over Christmas, and um, you know, but it's pretty soon back to work and uh, recruiting and spring training and. Uh, you know, trying to get the puzzle back together for trying to make another run. You had another fantastic season last year, went all the way to the Final Four. What were some of the keys? I mean, what is it that the last decade or so has made the Gopher program so successful? Well, no question that Mike Hebert and his staff did a wonderful job building this program. And uh, Laura Bush was a wonderful interim coach and, and uh, was part of my staff for uh, a couple of years. And, and, and certainly currently right now, Matt Houck and, and uh, Laura Casey have been great as assistants. So I've got really good people around me, and <laughs> that makes a huge difference. Uh, and in addition, we've been able to recruit some very good uh, local talent and, and bring in some really strong athletes from other parts of the country. And so that's been, uh, you know, a culmination of a lot of factors, but it's allowed us to establish a culture that I think is, is working in our favor. Um, our athletes work very hard. They uh, they're committed to the process of, of uh, daily improvement, trying to get better every day at the craft, and uh, we seem to be getting some dividends. Certainly, back-to-back -back Final Fours has been great. Um, you know, hopefully, we can get there again and uh, maybe win it one third. Talk a little bit about the players you lost last year, and, and is it more of a reloading situation coming into this next season, or is it a little bit more of a rebuild? Uh, yeah, probably a bit of both. Um, and I say that just because we're not exactly sure, you know, it's one thing to look at our recruiting class uh, within the context of their club world or high school world, but, you know, getting them into college, it's a different environment. The strains and the stresses, the expectations, the level of play, it's, it's different. So it's hard to know now how they're going to react in August. That being said, though, it's, it's a good recruiting class. It's uh, nationally ranked. I think we're ranked fourth in the nation as, uh, as a recruiting class coming in. Um, some very talented young women that can jump high and hit hard. and. Um, no doubt we lost a lot you know we had six seniors departing but we got six people coming in and um, you know hopefully we won't lose too much in terms of conference powers is is the big 10 considered the leader in volleyball yeah i think over the last few years it, it's probably uh, considered to be the best it's it's certainly been the strongest top to bottom uh which is great i mean it makes every night just an unbelievable battle Coach, you mentioned you're from New Zealand. Where does the United States rank worldwide as far as volleyball, not only skill, but popularity? Uh, skill very highly. Uh, the, the, both the men and women have uh, medaled in the Olympic Games uh, over the last few Olympic Games. So, so yeah, the, the, there's certainly um, a very strong volleyball culture, but I think within the context of the, the bigger sports that uh, are currently popular in the U.S. Volleyball is considered more of a you know Sunday afternoon and a barbecue kind of thing. Than, and I think when people really see what it is as a sport, you know, with uh, you know in the arena and the, 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 the amount of athleticism and skill that it takes to execute at a high level, people are really drawn to it. Uh, we're just slowly increasing exposure every year, and, and you know I think uh, BTN and, and other college networks have given us a platform for um, you know increasing the game's popularity, and hopefully that'll lead to bigger things. You know, it'd be nice to get a professional league in our country. It'd be nice to do a, a few other things, but uh, you know that's that's beyond the realm of my uh, of my scope. But uh, th there are interesting things for volleyball to hit. I think. You make an interesting point because it hasn't caught fire here in the States as so much of a spectator sport. You draw great crowds at the pavilion, yeah. but as far as television, that sort of thing, I think it's still gaining traction. But if you do go to a beach or you do go to a bar and there's a volleyball court, you're going to jump out there and play. It is something that people are interested in. Yeah, I agree. And, and uh, you know, as I said, the, the spectator thing is important because, uh, especially within the Big Ten, the, the, the crowd support is phenomenal. Uh, a bunch of arenas in that conference sell out to the tune of, you know, five, six, seven thousand, eight thousand people. So it, it's not a question of fan interest. Um, I think it's just getting the message out there. And, and the, the great thing is that the caliber of athlete that's coming into these programs every year is getting higher and higher. So the, the, the level of play is getting higher and higher. Um, so, yeah, it's an exciting time to be a part of women's volleyball, especially. What about Minnesota and Central Minnesota specifically? I know Ricori has had some great success here recently in volleyball. Where does Minnesota rank when you're recruiting? Obviously, you want to start at home, right? No question. You know, we, we try to um, recruit the best players in the state. Uh, you know, first of all, not everyone wants to stay at home. Some people want to go outside of the state. 
and you know, a lot of the recruiting depends on the year and the positional needs. You know, uh, our athletes in general specialized by position, so you know, maybe in a year where you know they're a setter, we've already got a setter, so they might want to go somewhere else where they don't, they don't have to battle or. Or, uh, you know, if we don't need a middle in this class and there's a really strong middle in it, it gets to be tough. But overall, certainly, uh, Minnesota is a great volleyball state, and um, we consider that to be a really strong competitive advantage for us. Um, in terms of the local area, yeah, there are lots of good volleyball in this area, and, and we've um, done our best to try to keep tabs on, on, on all the talent that's out there. There's a lot of kids playing, uh, sorry, playing club volleyball and high school volleyball. It's, uh, I think in clubs it's well over half a million athletes that are playing club volleyball in high school. It's a bigger number, um, but so it's a lot of people to track. But, uh, but yeah, we, we think it's great uh, for us as the only Division One university in the state to have such a, a great volleyball history and heritage. You know. What about youth volleyball below high school? Is that something that could use a little bit more building? Yeah, I think so. Generally, people tend to think that having a net in the court. You know, or a little bit of a barrier to, to getting the game going. But you know, you can put a piece of rope up there and and you know, bounce the ball back and forth. I think there's lots of different creative ways to try to uh, figure out what volleyball could be for young kids. You know, and, and I think we tend to think of it within the either the you know the, the barbecue context or this elite level thing. But I think there's ways to play something that's that's got the skills of volleyball. Uh, you know, at a less intense level and certainly you know a higher level than just that pure. Like I said, barbecue recreation. Well, I think there's a common ground. What do you get out of these road trips yourself personally? I know you got some DQ earlier today. But <laughs> outside of that, what do you tend to get when you come to these visits? Well, the thing that's great is that, uh, you know, we're, we're, as I said, we're the only Division One uh, program in the state. And and we do. We represent all of Minnesota. We take that responsibility seriously. The thing that's great about this trip is that we get to connect with all the different parts of the state and, um, you know, really... You know, put some put some faces to to the the whole thing, the idea that that, that it's all in Minnesota, not just the Twin Cities. And I, I don't think that we get into this thing where we we're all about the Twin Cities only. Uh, it's just that that's where we operate, so we tend to be in our little bubble. Sure. And this this forces us to get out and um, and like I said, and connect. And it's been wonderful. You know, a lot of a lot of great support from a lot of places all around Minnesota. Coach, we appreciate the time this afternoon. Thank you very much for joining.